He's trying to stay away from the fucking off. <laughs> Actually, that was a bit risque. A little bit of risque. I remember there were some children in tonight. So why don't you fuck off? <laughs> <laughs> Shh! <laughs> 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 
<laughs> okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> if you really want to know why I'm here, earlier last year, I got invited away to Emperor Hirohito's funeral. <laughs> yeah, I was there. With all the celebs, you know, super hard, all the guys, all the <laughs> All the celebs, all lined up, you know, sniggering. <laughs> like, yeah, he's spinning the hole, you little fucker! And I hate it! I hate it! Because my dad, like, you know that bridge that they built over that river? Why? My dad worked on that. My dad worked on that. And the little Japanese bastards, <laughs> the little cunning, devious, little Japanese Nissan factory building bastards, <laughs> they didn't even kill him. Who the hell would they left him alive? I said, Dad, why didn't they kill you? He said, Ricky, it was only a film. <laughs> anyway, while I was away at the funeral, my eldest daughter, right, Rick, <laughs> she's three and a half, right, to satisfy her craving for heroin, <laughs> she sold my house. <laughs> 15 bedroom mansion in Hampstead, in London. The celebrity helipad and drive-in be there and everything. <laughs> she sold it for eleven pounds. <laughs> I said, Rick, come here. Rick, come here. Rick, come here. And take that out of your arm. <laughs> we are going to do now. She said, What about Thailand, Daddy? I mean, the opium's fantastic out that way. <laughs> I said, We've well, got eleven pounds to buy a house. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna sort this out. You kids. Both of you. Male, you too. <laughs> uh, put on your hats, and your coats, and your little scarves, and your little mittens. Okay. Now okay, get in the fridge! <laughs> and bring them out till I get back! If the new owners come around, pretend to be the last two slices of quiche. <laughs> it's alright. It's only a joke. <laughs> Obviously, I don't eat quiche. <laughs> I can't believe I am. So, with the 400 people with estate agents, could I buy the house for 11 pounds? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's just Britain, right? I've been away four days. I thought, Jesus, fucking head hurts. <laughs> Jesus, the kids, they're still in the fridge. It's just a chance. I rushed home, I opened the door, and fuck it, they're still alive. <laughs> I said, hi kids, what do you want for tea? They said, smack, man. I said, you've got it. <laughs> that part is good. That part is the only good thing about having two small children. <laughs> 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 It's not true. It's not true. I just made it up. It's just a, it's just a bit of fluff. I made it up for you to live your lives just a little bit. Hey, 
Because people warn me about the inbreeding in skateness. How was your name? No, I'm not talking to you, fat face. What's your name? Joe. Joe, your name is Joe, fat face. Your name is Joe, is it? Joe! Joe. Joe. That's weird. Wonder when I ask a girl in May, she says, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Joe. <laughs> no, I am sorry, actually. I've got syphilis. My, uh, my girlfriend died last week. Sex. And now I'm crap at sex. 
I know you wouldn't think it to look at me. <laughs> but I am. I can say to me, guys and chicks are skate nets. I mean, guys and chicks are the skate nets. <laughs> guys and chicks are the skate. <laughs> you are the guys and chicks of the skate. <laughs> you have the knowledge. Where do you pick up your sex pigs in the first place? In the school playground, right? The first time I had it off, the first time I had it off, I went. I'll tell you, this is true. This is true. No, this is true. I don't know why I'm telling you this. But this is true. Do you know? Well, you don't, because I haven't told you yet. I'll tell you, you'll know. This is true. Do you know? I was 18. I really was. I was 18 before I realised you're supposed to put your balls in as well. <laughs> what a brat I am! <laughs> so, I mean, guys are the scared. I mean, hang on, chicks are the scared for a moment, but I'm talking to the guys are the scared. <laughs> guys are the scared. What do you do when you've got no girlies left? <laughs> what do you do when you've got no girlies left? <laughs> Have a fag. 
Are you alright, Smoke? Right. No. Are oh, you poor darling? <laughs> <laughs> I'll enjoy it for you. Mmm, <laughs> what a great fan. <laughs> and then sometimes you get a special one that's really nice. Let that bastard smoke in front of us, no wonder we fucking hate him. <laughs> I'm going to do as my tribute to Agent Hamilton. This is uh, Abe's favourite joke. <laughs> Abe's favourite joke of all. So talk about yourselves. <laughs> knock knock. Well, you've heard it. <laughs> I'll tell you another one. You can ask back on this one and then no more. <laughs> <laughs> knock knock. Who's there? Adrian Edmondson. <laughs> exactly, that's what he's done. I'm 
in love with sex. The lust locomotive <laughs> fell in love. Because she was so <laughs> she said. <laughs> she said. <laughs> When 
know, the comedy doom, but the hell. <laughs> We're on our way to the final slaughterhouse. The pit of everlasting suffering. And you don't want to be good. Huh? <laughs> you know what? Because <laughs> you took my toys away. <laughs> Why did you take my toys away? <laughs> you should have done that. <laughs> that was naughty. I shall I shall have to punish you, Mr. Ness. I shall have to punish you. This is your Right, I was like, and it'd be a great man for it. 
<laughs> but it wouldn't work that because you'd never get them all in the hive. <laughs> the honey would be crap. <laughs> so that's why I stick to bees, you know. I've got about, uh, well, I've got about, um, uh, I've got about, do 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 I can be carry on, you get to the wrong number. <laughs> That'd be crap, wouldn't it? <laughs> Unless you wanted the wrong number, you know, then it'd be great. Then it might be something like 7. <laughs> or uh, 15. Or, well, I mean, there's loads of wrong numbers, it could be, you know. I'll do some. 158. <laughs> 7 billion. <laughs> That'd take a while. Sixteen and a half. <laughs> That'd be a crap bee, wouldn't it? <laughs> no, but the main thing about bees, right? The main thing, because there's loads of things about bees. You know, like they've got wings. <laughs> and eyes. Because the eyes fell off. <laughs> and crash or something, you know. They've got little legs that hang down like that. Instead of flying upside down, you know. <laughs> Or if they might be lying on their back, sticking their legs in the air competition. <laughs> and they look like that. Well, no, only the ones who was good at the competition would look like that. The ones who was crap at it would look like that. <laughs> but the main thing about bees is you've got to keep them dry. And I was just in the braces. I was just taking the bees out for a walk, like. I had one on that lead and one on that lead. I was just in the braces. And it was unbelievable. Except that it happened, though. So, you yeah, have to believe it, you know. It's unbelievable, but believable. <laughs> Got that booty in the wall. It's unbelievable, but believable. She's carried out in the tent. Booty in the wall. Now, I hear it's German. <laughs> Climb up out of that water, down the other side, and crack it. Oh, shit, it's still German. <laughs> right, dear Jim. So can I speak English? <laughs> Back in the Christmas place. What? Back in the Christmas. What? <laughs> I want to pack in the Christmas place. I can't understand what you're fucking saying. Can't you speak German? <laughs> no. Well, you start to take one, Jim. The mad thing about this is you've got to keep them dry. It started to rain. It was unbelievable. So I've got the bees, I've got one in there and one in there. I don't want no fighting, like. <laughs> and I don't want a swarm. <laughs> I went to the police and I said, listen, mate, I don't want that public outcry or anything like that. I don't want no panic in the streets, like. But I've got a couple of little round here, things, yeah? And I'm looking for somewhere warm and safe to stick them. <laughs> get them in. <laughs> he says, are you trying to be funny? I said, no. I was trying to be funny. I was saying something like, do look, you've got a big blue tit on your head. <laughs> well, that's what I tried to say. What I actually said was, yeah, but it's so funny. You think you're going to be a big tit, Because he was trying to make my neck smaller with his hands. <laughs> Keep it out of the rain, I suppose. <laughs> but he said, I'll give you somewhere warm and safe to stick your little around anything, right? I thought, oh, right. And he took me down to the police station where they've got these special rooms for keeping bees dry. They've got sounds. Sounds. They were ever so nice. Do you know what they say about policemen? Well, it's not true. Because he was ever so nice. He showed me the route to my cell so that I'd remember it from my way out. It's like, he held my feet very carefully and he put my face on the top step and then he sort of walked me down so my face got a really good look at all the steps. <laughs> Trail for me to follow on my way out. Took me to my cell, got his truncheon out, and I went to lie down quickly. And then locked the door, says I'll be safe. So here I am. Everything's great. The bees are dry. And I'm sure I'll be able to see properly by the end of next week. <laughs> but the thing is, right, they're not really bees. That's the whole problem. They're not really bees. They're 
nice. <laughs> but I disguise them as bees and gallop out deep. Because <laughs> they're my trick flies and I don't want no one to pick them. That's why I'm going to keep them out of the rain. So they don't go all runny. Because they're my trick flies, right? They're fantastic. They can say their own names. What are those called? <laughs> Anyway, and the other one's called Gabby. <laughs> but he's not so good at talking like that. But he's dead. <laughs> Channel 4 typewriter didn't work properly either. 
That can only type one joke and one joke only. Hey, Frank, it was a cheap, crap, imported American joke. Great. Hey, Frank, that insulation's really great. The wife had the kids wrapped in it. I says, how do we know which way they're facing? She says, what's well, up to you? You work for me, you tell me. Oh, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> In desperation, I stole Ben Elton's typewriter. I didn't write any fucking jokes at all. I just shouted a lot. And I broke three fingers trying to keep up. In the end, I thought, oh, sod it. I pulled out my trusty ballpoint. Who were there? Obviously. <laughs> I thought, right, here goes. I'm going to write my joke for the Queen's gear. Okay. Here goes a brilliant original alternative joke. Right. This bloke goes into a pub. No, no, uh, uh, uh. that's too straight, you see? Too straight, I'm Rick Mayer, lucky for me, lucky for the chick. <laughs> so it's got to be dangerously alternative. Okay, this woman, that's good, keep it 90s, right girls? Yeah, this woman walks into a fish. <laughs> now it's dangerous. This woman walks into a fish and says to the lawyer, I'll have a gin tonic, please. And, and the lawyer says, punchline. Well, I've got it, I've fucking got it, this is fucking brilliant! Listen to this! Get a load of this, guy the chicks of the skeg! This woman walks into a fish and says to the lawyer, I'll have a gin and tonic, please, and the lawyer says, I'm sorry, madam, you've come to the wrong place! Place! Fish! Get it! Look at that joke! Look at that joke, swamp! Do you know what I mean? On the strength of a joke of that caliber, I can get a 66-part series on Channel 4, which will catapult me into the movies! This might get me a shy if I'm lucky. <laughs> so I wrote to Channel 4 straight away. Dear Channel 4, this woman walks into a fish and says to the lawyer, I'll have a gin and tonic, please. And the lawyer says, I'm sorry, madam, you've come to the wrong place. Place, fish, get it, yours faithfully, hit mail. Sent it off. <laughs> Three days, takes me waiting by the front door. Oh, you wouldn't hear my car. <laughs> Finally, the flap opens. <laughs> No reason at all. Fantastic racing time! Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh, About my job. About my own baby. <laughs> that I conceived and brought into the world. <coughs> what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? Say, hey, Jokey. Jokey, darling, come here. Come here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's no mind about that. Listen, listen. You crap! Die! I can't say that. So I do. So we just carried on life as normal. Normal as we could. <laughs> Going to the swing park. Playing in the swingers. <laughs> I can see the people staring. <laughs> Daddy? Yes, Jokey? <laughs> Why are all those people staring and pointing at me? They think I'm not funny. No, Jokey, no. You're very funny. No, they're just, they're just silly people. Come on, let's go with them. <laughs> Sorry. I took him to the palladium to see little and large. <laughs> oh, Daddy, when I'm in a big joke like that, when I'm grown up. <laughs> I don't know, not Julia. I know. And then, and then, one night, I was just tucking him in, and I, I guess I said to his bedroom too long, uh, I used to try to get out before the emotion overwhelmed me, before I, I thought of how funny he actually was. And that night, I guess I stayed in too long, and as I bent down to kiss him, a tear fell from my eye onto his cheek, and he said, Daddy, 
Nothing's wrong. Nothing's wrong, Junior. I said, nothing's wrong at all. And I vowed, there and then, that my little chokey would have everything all the other little chokies had. He'd have everything he ought to have from his little life. I was going to make him fight. I was going to give him the secrets of poverty. I had no idea what it was, of course. I went to find it. But I packed and I left the very next morning. Bye-bye, Daddy. Bye-bye, this woman walks into a fish. She says to the lawyer, I'll have a gin and tonic, please. And the lawyer says, I'm sorry, madam, you've come to the wrong place. Place, fish, get it. I said, won't be long. I got outside and thought, right, secret of comedy. Let's go! I got on the car. I got off the car. I opened the door and got in the car. <laughs> and I said, what? Oh, oh. I knew the journey was going well already. So I hit the road. Boom, up that land one. Road machine and sex machine in perfect harmony. It was beautiful. The sun was just touching the horizon. The speedo was just touching 90. I was just touching my willy. In the back of me, I got stopped. I got stopped. And he came over, you know, like they always do, wearing a dress. Do you know what speed you were doing? I said, yeah, 110. He said, oh, that's all right. I just didn't know if you knew or not. I said, would you fuck off and leave me alone? He said, certainly, sir. Oh, might I suggest you use the other carriageway? Most of the people travelling north are driving on the other side of the motorway. I said, oh, God, rules, rules, rules. No wonder I'm an anarchist. And off I'm fucked. I tell you, that's the last time I'm ever stopping for a bishop during a traffic survey. <laughs> driving all day right now, I must have been there. Ah, so that 50, 60 cans of lager. So I'm bursting for a piece. So the sound motorway services, one mile. I thought, right. I fucking missed it. I went to go to the next one. So the sound says, motorway services, 23 miles. I thought, right, I'm not missing it this time. So I slowed down at five miles an hour and drove along the hard shoulder. Four hours, 20 minutes later, I'm just about to put into the services. I see a big sign says, no football coaches. I think, oh, fuck it! Carry on down the motorway. Three miles further down the motorway, I realise I'm not driving a football coach. I think, oh, fuck it! But I'm on the motorway, there's no turning back. Suddenly, a real football coach goes by, and on the back it says, toilets. <laughs> toilets! Toilets! Hostess service. Video. Mm. <laughs> you can have the video you want, not that. <laughs> That's disgusting. That's filthy. I'll have some of that. So I jammed my gas pedal to full throttle and my sex hot roared down the fast lane. Bam, we hit the back of the coach. Obviously, I went straight through the windscreen, splattered up against the emergency exit, grabbed hold of the knob, gave it a yank. Here we were, obviously. The whole door came off, and I was in that toilet before you could say this midget goes to join the SAS. <laughs> <laughs> this midget goes to join the SAS. Okay, this midget goes to join the SAS. And he goes up to the front door, the SAS. And he goes, <coughs> on the door. And a huge SAS jail comes to the door. And he opens the door. And the midget says, ah, uh, ah, uh, hello. Ah. Uh, I'd like to join the SAS, please. And the general says, Fuck him. <laughs> you two fucking stop. <laughs> he says, Yes, I have been vaguely aware of that for the last 18 years. Anyway, give me a break, Charlie. I'm a psychotic maniac. He goes, Oh, you're a fucking psychotic maniac, girl, eh? Oh, that, then I'll give you the fucking SAS test. Go around back at the shed. <laughs> the midget and the SAS general go around the back of the SAS ship. And the SAS general says, Right, fucking right, right, fucking, fucking right, right, fucking. <laughs> fucking see this fucking, uh, fucking, uh, you know, fucking, uh, fucking, see this fucking, uh, uh, pen knife. The midget says, Yes, I can see the pen knife. <laughs> right, you don't fucking take that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right, 
And you see this fucking, um, uh, fucking, uh, the fucking, fucking, what's the fucking, 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 um, uh, fucking, uh, fucking SAS survival kit. <laughs> yes, I can see the SAS survival kit. Right, you fucking take that too. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Find the 
secret economy. A skeg. <laughs> skeg. Skeg mess. Uh huh. Skeg mess. Skeg mess. Ah! Oh! 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 That's where it is. And he vanished. So, ladies and gentlemen, the price of chicks is a skeg. <laughs> I came here tonight. No, no, man, you did too. <laughs> I came here to find a secret economy of hate. Hate skeg. I have no idea. <laughs> because it's our love, isn't it, guys and chicks? It's our love. That's the secret of comedy. I want to say thank you for all that love, ladies and gentlemen, because our relationship is consummated. That's it. There can be no more. <clears throat> Excuse me, I keep doing that. <laughs> That's the end of the show, ladies and gentlemen. There can be no more. You've been great. I've been great. You've been stupendous. I have been loved. Mm, that's what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen. Love. Love and comedy. My comedy. Love my comedy. That's what you do that makes me happy. Look, happiness. That's what you did to me. I am your love child. I want to say that it's time to go, but hey, I don't want to say that it's time to go, but ladies and gentlemen, it's time to go, and you know I didn't want to say that. But this is it. I have to leave you. Hey, 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 hey. Let me this. Mm -hmm. Let me give you love for the living and life for the laughter. Mm. <laughs> you know what you give me. I know. You know. That's why it it's our secret. <laughs> so let's tell the world.